Welcome back to our 10 for 10 series. Today we're going to be addressing a question regarding a blessing known as Birkat HaGomel, a thanksgiving blessing which we need to thank Hashem for His kindness that He's bestowed upon us. And we're going to look at today the various specific uh, requirements surrounding that blessing. What should you say it for? Who should say it? Where should you say it? When should you say it? And so on. And I'll also give an update in terms of this blessing, Birkat HaGomel, in this current situation today when coronavirus is still... Um, you know, causing us to be in lockdown, where shuls are still closed, and some of the requirements which you'll hear about may not be possible to be fulfilled. And therefore, we're going to see what can you do at this current time uh, based on a response that I read from Rav Heschel Schechter, who addresses saying Gomel during the times of corona. So we're going to run through a number, of the, number of these items. And of course, we can't cover every little aspect, but I'd like to just address some of the major parts of Birkut HaGomel and to see how they may be relevant to you, and if you do need to say Birgit HaGomel, um, how you should say it, when should you say it, and the preferable things that should go in terms of saying this blessing. So firstly, there are four main categories that are related to Birgit HaGomel. Uh, the Gemara speaks about it, Shulchan Aruch talks about it. The first is for somebody who has crossed the ocean. So if you've flown over the ocean, you've traveled from Melbourne to New York, for example, you would need to say Birgit HaGomel. The second is one who has crossed through the desert. Now this concept of crossing the desert um, really relates to any life-threatening situation. So, for example, a wall collapsed on you that the Gemara speaks about, or an ox gored the person. Modern-day concept, if you've been held up by gunpoint, or, um, you know, God forbid, or a car accident, God forbid. So any very life-threatening situation that you've survived. The third category, which is very specific, which is somebody who's recovered from a serious illness. And the fourth is somebody who has been released from prison. So we'll look at some of these categories, and we'll look at, as I said, some of the things surrounding that. So firstly, in terms of travel and crossing the ocean, the halacha speaks about that you should recite the Birkat HaGomel when you reach your destination. If you need to make a few stopovers along the journey, so you're traveling, let's say, from Melbourne to New York, and you're going to stop at different places, even if one of the stops might be for a day or so, you recite it at the final destination. If, however, you are returning um, very quickly, so just a day trip, and you are going to be crossing the ocean, for example, you say it when you get back home. If a person has experienced one or more of the, of the following that we mentioned, one of those four categories um, within the same span, span of time, you only need to say the bracha once, and it includes the blessing once, and it includes for all the various reasons why you might be saying it. Um, now, in terms of um, flying, a lot of people have asked me this question, and I've checked it out with other senior rabbonim. If you're flying over land but not over the sea, you don't need to say it unless there was a mishap during the travel. So there was an issue, let's say, with the engine, or, some, or the captain said there was something, you know, some terrible turbulence that uh, could have been dangerous. Then even if you're only traveling over land, you would then say the bracha. Um, another reason why we say the bracha is uh, if a woman has given birth to a child, of course, because that could be a life-threatening situation, so she should say the bracha. Uh, she should wait until at least seven days have passed. So here's the one, ex the one exception where you'll see that we usually try and say it within three days after the life-threatening situation. Here she waits until after seven days, and if she can't come to shul within that time frame, then we try and arrange a minion at her home, and she can say it at the home in front of the minion. So where generally should you say the blessing? As I said, it should be done in, in the presence of a minion, and the one saying the Birk, the Birk HaGomel could be one of those minions if he is male. Um, it should ideally, as I said, be said within the first three days of the incident. So if a person has had a car accident and then has recovered, they should try to within three days after their recovery. That's the preferable way to do it. Another preference should be to try and say it in front of the presence of a Torah scroll. So on the days when we have Torah reading. Um, if, 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 if the person is female, then they could still do it in front of the Torah, obviously behind the Mechitza, if it, you know, and uh, the people can respond as we'll see the response that needs to happen. It should try to not delay it more than three days. Now, I, some people have asked me this. What if I have the choice of either saying it within the first three days, but not in front of the Torah, or later than three days, but in the presence of a Torah scroll? The answer is it's preferable to do it within the first three days. So, for example, if a person returns from a trip on Monday afternoon, um, and the Torah has already been read for that day, they should not wait to say the blessing on Thursday morning in front of the Torah. Rather, preferable to say it on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday in front of a minion at least. And so to somebody who is... Uh, God forbid, sitting shiva, they shouldn't wait till after the shiva so they can get called up to the Torah because you can't get called up to the Torah during your shiva. Rather say it in front of the minion um, within the th first three days 
uh, that's more that's 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 preferable um, some say if you can't do it within the first three days you should wait five days um, some say it can be done after five days as well others still say you can even wait up until 30 days if you can't find a minion now if the person who's being called up to the torah um, is going to be saying the birkat hagomel he should say the blessing after saying the last blessing of the torah following his aliyah and then say the birkat hagomel um, if there are not enough aliyah to give to all those to have to say the blessing so let's say you had 15 people who need to say birkat hagomel they can all say together um, at the end as well um, and of course um, the, the response would then be for each person saying the gomel the community would respond as we'll see who needs to say Birkat HaGomel? It is only for those who are over bar and bat mitzvah. As I said, women are obligated to say the bracha. And they could say it from the shul in front of the Torah, um, you know, from behind the mechitzah. Um, and some do say, however, that for a woman, she is entitled to say the bracha in front of uh, another one man or one woman. So some say she doesn't necessarily need to have a minion. And others say that if she is saying in front of a man, it should be preferably her husband. But again, most people that I've seen in terms of uh, the customs here in Melbourne and certainly other places I've lived would be to have the woman say it in front of a minion as well. Now, the bracha should be said standing, but if you did say it while sitting, and of course, if a person can't stand, then they can also say it seated and they don't have to repeat it. It's also preferable to say it during the daytime because the korban todah, the Thanksgiving offering, was given during the daytime. Um, um, but if you did say it at night time, you also still have fulfilled your obligation. Uh, and the Hassam Sofra says, in fact, we are permitted to say it at night, but shouldn't make it a regular occurrence. We say the blessing, I'll say it in English. Bless you, Hashem, who bestows kindness upon the culpable, for he has bestowed goodness upon me. And the idea is that Hashem, who deals kindly, even with those that are not deserving, has also dealt kindly with me, you know, the person saying the blessing, who is not really worthy of Hashem's kindness. And those who hear the blessing should respond, um, may he who has bestowed beneficence upon you always bestow every beneficence upon you. Um, and just be careful when you say that, that blessing to, to enunciate the words correctly. So some additional customs surrounding this bracha. It's appropriate for the recipient of Hashem's kindness to do the same for others. So you're saying Hashem has done kindness for me. Let me now do kindness for others. So perhaps to give some tzedakah or volunteer to do something nice for a communal. Also, in lieu of the Todah, Thanksgiving sacrifice, that was offered by a grateful person during temple times, of course we don't have, there are those who recite those, there are those who recite the verses of the Torah that refer to the Todah sacrifices. So if you can look that up and recite those verses, it's also another way of, um, you know, I guess bringing back the, the temple times traditions, which was to bring that common, um, to bring that Korban Todah. Um, some also have the minhag, the custom, if they have been, um, have survived a life-threatening situation, so not necessarily about traveling over the ocean, to hold a su'udat hoda'a, a Thanksgiving meal, and to do that. Now, uh, a question that has been asked to me a number of times, if a person goes for surgery, so let's say it's a non-life-threatening surgery, but goes under general anesthetic, do you need to say the Birkin Hagomel? So I've asked a number of doctors, what do they consider in terms of general anesthetic? And... Most of them say that it is, you know, whilst we do it all the time, it does have a life-threatening situation. So I've spoken to some other rabbonim, um, some senior poskim who've said that a person could say Birgit HaGomel after going under general anesthetic. So those are the, 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 the specific cases in which we would say Birgit HaGomel, when you should say it, the time frame within saying it. Now, in terms of, as I mentioned, um, what do we do now in our days because of COVID-19 where you cannot be... Uh, with a minion this you can't be in front of a minion the shuls are closed and so on so as i said it's best to try and recite within three days of recovering from that life in situation um, and therefore because we we know that it's, we're not going to have the opportunity to say it so if you do know that um, you will have the presence of a minion right not the torah scroll but a minion within the next few days um, so let's say the, the restrictions might ease up in the next week let's say then it's preferable to wait for the minion but if there's not going to be a minion, we know that the restrictions might, we don't know when it's going to um, uh, be removed. So then, as I said, Rav Heshel Shechter said that we are allowed to make the bracha in the presence of a Zoom minion or on the phone. So if you, if you, if you have the opportunity to meet with a minion via Zoom, then say the Birkat HaGomel. There's permission to do that. And it's not the same as um, needing a minion for, let's say, for a, a davening or for Pirtat Torah. 
which are would be called Dvarim Shebikdusha and require a minion in, in gathering in one place, Birkat HaGamel, the purpose is really to publicize the miracle that Hashem did for this person. And this can be accomplished even without having to gather physically. Although that's our preference to do it within three days with the minion in front of the Torah. But if we can't do it, you can make the bracha via Zoom. So if you need to make the bracha, um, um, and you, you're welcome to get in touch with me, and I can assist you with that. And let's hope we can still meet together in the nearby future. Thank you, and hope uh, to see you at our next 10 for 10.